Hi everyone, it's Miss Mary from Skokie Public Library, and I am back with another Rise and Shine story time. I miss all you Rise and Shine kids so much, and I'm so glad that I have the chance to talk with you a little bit and read a little bit and sing a little bit with you while we're all needing to stay home. Now, as you know, every single Monday when we're in the library, Miss Kathy and I do Rise and Shine story time, and we always have one special thing. Do you remember what that is? I'm gonna show you right now. It's our magic box. And in our magic box is what we are going to be reading about today. It's always something different. I'm gonna shake it doesn't make too much noise, does it? So it's probably something soft. Do you have any guesses about what might be in this box today? Maybe a teddy bear? Hmm, maybe a doll? Maybe a soft blanket? Maybe something very light? Should we look and see? Okay, we're gonna look. Do you know that in this box is one of my very favorite things? It's a robin. Now, I don't know if you've seen any robins this year, but you know, robins are birds that don't stay with us all winter. In the wintertime, when it gets cold, robins fly south. They go to warmer places than where we live. But in the spring, they come back. And a lot of people think that a robin is a sign of spring and warmer weather to come. As you can see, a robin has kind of an orangey um, chest and tummy, kind of orangey red, and gray feathers on the top and a yellow beak. And they use this beak because they like to hop around on the lawn and look for worms. They love to eat worms and they've got very good eyesight and they can look down and see a worm and pull it right out of the ground and eat it. Now this robin is kind of special because he can make a sound that robins make. So I'm gonna press him and you're gonna hear a robin sound, song. That's what robins say when they sing their songs. And some people say that it sounds like, sort of like this, cheer up, cheerily, cheer up, cheerily. Let's listen one more time. Thank you, Mr. Robin. So let's read a story about a robin. This is called My Spring Robin. It's by Anne Rockwell. And I am reading it today with the permission of Simon & Schuster Books. A robin sang a song for me every day last summer. I liked that robin. But in the fall, my robin flew away. My father said it would come back in the spring. And here they are looking at the calendar to see when spring is coming. So when spring came, I went looking for my spring robin. She's looking very hard, isn't she? I saw a bee taking honey from a crocus, but I didn't see my robin. Can you see the bee? I'm going to hold the book up close so you can see that be right in the flower. I looked into the yellow forsythia bush, but my robin wasn't there. My robin was not sitting high up in the branches of the magnolia tree. 
Have you seen some of those trees with the beautiful pink flowers that are out right now? In the fern garden, behind our outdoor table, fuzzy fiddlehead ferns were sprouting in last year's wet brown leaves. See them coming up? But I didn't see my robin there. I don't see the robin anywhere, do you? Not yet. I saw a tiny toad. It hopped behind a clump of daffodils to hide from me. Can you see the toad right here? And I bet you've seen some of those yellow daffodils too this spring. I looked high up in the sky to see if my robin was flying back to me. And there's the sky. Drops of rain fell on my face and our neighbor's cat ran home. After the rain, I picked a little bunch of purple violets for my mother. I watched a shiny earthworm wiggle up out of the ground. Can you see that earthworm? Right in the corner, right here. And then I heard it. I heard that song. Cheer up, cheerily, cheerily, cheer up, cheerily, cheerily. I knew who was singing that song. Who is it? It was my spring robin. Now, if you look outside right about now, you will see a lot of robins hopping around on the grass and they're looking for food, but they're also getting materials to make their nests. I have a couple of things here that robins use to make their nests and I just wanna show you some of the things that they gather. You know, their nests are going to hold the eggs for their babies. So one thing that a robin loves to gather is dried grass like this, because that makes a very good outer shell for the nest. You can see it almost folds into a nest. And they also like to gather little twigs like this. And they weave those into their nest to make it strong. And you will see robins picking up pieces of mud because mud makes a nice glue to hold everything together. And they like to line their nest with something nice and soft for their babies, like grass. So you'll see a robin picking up pieces of grass. And sometimes, A feather. Now I found something a few days ago that I want to show you too. This is an, a robin's egg. Can you see it? And this is an egg that a baby robin hatched out of. And you can see that the robin came right out of this little hole after op opening up his egg with his uh, little beak. And this is the color. Aren't they beautiful? So if you see a robin's nest with some eggs in it, they will be this color of blue. Well, before I go today, I thought maybe we could just sing a little song about robins. And it goes like this. 
Five little robins in a sycamore tree, a father, a mother, and babies three. Father brought a bug, mother brought a worm. Five little robins started to squirm. This one ate a bug, this one ate a worm. This one sat and waited for his turn. That's nice, isn't it? Sometimes it's nice to wait for your turn. And little baby robins in their nests probably have to wait their turn for their parents to feed them. So um, why don't we all go outside and take a look around and see if we can find some robins? I bet you can. I know I can. And I will see you next time for more stories. Bye.